All right, so the first thing that jumps out at me at uh, P3-33 is we have all of these concentric geometries that kind of indicate that we're, um, we're going to be able to do contour and region and be most efficient by generating those shapes in one sketch and then cutting out the, um, the geometry that we need. So file new, part millimeter, we'll go into the right plane and this is just picking for the orientation. If you draw it in the front plane, it'll just be rotated 90 degrees. I'm going to draw the concentric circles. So the outside, the inside, and since the back geometry isn't really given a dimension, I'm assuming that this cut and will be the same all the way across. All right, so we'll see that here in a second. We have a diameter of 40. The next inside is 32. All right, and I really didn't want that to be a, a linear diameter, so I'm going to go over to the uh, to the leaders and change it to diameter with the standard extension line. And then we'll place the inside is 20. And then to make these regions usable for this shape, I'm going to create the line across that splits it. All right, so We'll go to the uh, isometric view just to kind of get that visual. So the only thing we don't have is the slot in the center. All right, and since that's on a different plane, it doesn't uh, doesn't really help us. So I want to uh, we're going to try the the three regions first, I'm visualizing it going backwards or going to the left. So I'll reverse the direction. It's 100 millimeters long. So that gives me my first shape. And then the cut. So let's expand that out and we'll uh, left click on the, uh, the sketch and go into the extrude cut. My cut geometry is 8 millimeters deep. And then when I select the region, that's the material that's going to be removed. Okay, and then one more time, we're sharing this sketch now. And when I go into the extrude, I want the upper region, and we'll reverse the direction. So we're on the wrong end, and if I were to offset from surface face or plane, I could go to the back of the part. Well, that reversing the direction didn't really help me there, so I need to reverse it back. All right, so depending on what I select here, if I was just going to offset the distance of 80, then go up to up to face, that would be a different combination from moving to the rear of the part and bringing it back forward. So if I want to stay with their dimensions, I can do the math and I can get 20 and plug in plenty 20 for the for the blind condition. But if I want to preserve that 80 millimeters, then I'm going to do offset from surface. And the surface that it's offset from comes back this way. All right, and 80 millimeters gives me the desired result. So it's kind of a, a weird logic, but in effect, I'm taking this sketch, I'm starting at the rear of the part on the back face, and then telling it from this face to terminate 80 millimeters. So, different combinations for different results. We'll go into the, um, the remaining face. I'm going to put in slot geometry. Get back to a select so that I can grab the center line and the origin, and those will be coincident. The slot is, um, let's see, we're given a radius of 2.
Hmm, that's an interesting uh, number, R of 2. Oh, full radius, two places. All right, so that's a little bit different. I uh, needed to interpret. There's no um, uh, no number after the after the R. I have to look for an example that I would expect to see that there is a dimension, but when you just see the R, that is a full radius for the 10 millimeter width. All right, and then dimensions from the uh, the face back 25. and an overall length of 35, so any of the linear components are valid for our geometry. And then we're going to extrude cut three millimeters deep. Okay, so that gives us our shape, and we're ready to save and go on.